Okay, we're gonna go fast here. We're gonna talk about the task library. We have a, a few functions to look at. We're gonna skip desync and sync because uh, those are not relevant to most task stuff. Those are dealing with parallel Lua, which is actual separate VMs running at the same time. In most cases, we're working within the one VM, the, the standard one here, and it is single threaded. And so nothing can run at the same time. So that's really important, right? So if we wanna run code seemingly at the same time, what we can do is something like task.spawn. So this is gonna run function right away, right? So if we run this code, we see it ran right away. It, we didn't get to end here. It said start right away and then end. That's gonna be the case all the time. So if we do a big loop, we print I, we're gonna see all of that print first before we get to end. So all of this is gonna run and it's gonna to continue to run all of its code until the first point that it either yields or it ends. So in this case, it's ending, and so it's continue on to the bottom. But if we had a yield, for instance, task.wait here, then we'll see that it does go down to end right here, right? If we swap the position of this wait right here, we see these two things flip flop. So if we print that out, we see it says start, we see it prints right away, we see it prints one, and then we yield, so it can continue on down here. We see the end, and then this code ends, and so after the next resumption, after this wait, we come back into the loop, we print two, and we continue on. So that's task.spawn. It's gonna spawn your thread immediately. It's not gonna wait, nothing like that. It's gonna spawn your thread and run it right away, and it's gonna run all of its code until it either yields or ends, okay? Very important. We also have a weird one, task.defer. Defer is very much like spawn, except it's going to defer into the end of the current invocation cycle. What is an invocation cycle? You can think of it as your run service events, such as heartbeat or stepped or render stepped and, and other things of that nature, various times that event connections fire off and whatnot. Defer is gonna run that function at the end of your current invocation cycle, wherever that is. So we can think of it similarly as just pushing this off until the future, until the end of the frame. It's still the same frame, very important. It is still the same frame, but it is at the end of the frame. So if I print out that deferred, we'll see that we see start, end, so we get these two statements first, and then we print out deferred in all the code. And importantly, look at the timestamps. We see that it's running at the same time. So that's deferred. We also have delay. Delay is going to run in the future. So if we put a zero, it's gonna delay this function for the next frame. So we see start, end, and then look at the timestamp difference. So we're running delay, and the next frame. Or if we wanna schedule it for one second in the future, we could do that as well. So we do start, end, and then after one second, we print out delay and we loop through those numbers. So that's task.delay. We delay until the future. So again, we have delay zero, which pushes off to the next frame, and we have defer, which pushes to the end of the current frame, and then we have spawn, which runs it immediately. And all of these functions return a thread value. So again, Lua is a single threaded language, but there's still a concept of what we call coroutine threads within Lua. And these threads can be checked, we can check their status, and importantly, we can cancel them. So remember, let's, let's say we're doing task.wait here. And let's say we wanna stop this execution from running after like 0.2 seconds. Well, we can do that. We can call task.cancel. We can pass it the thread that we got from task.spawn and it's gonna stop that execution. So if we run this code, we see that after 0.2 seconds, we cancel the thread and it no longer prints out any more numbers after two in this case, right? And so we've stopped the execution of that thread. This could even be done for long running, you know, even infinite loops, right? If we had something like task.wait1 here, we could even, cancel this out. So if we run this code, we'll see it loops in this case for 13 times and then it stops. So we've canceled out an infinite loop. Now I would not recommend this. It is not clear to the reader that this loop would be canceled possibly. I would always recommend using a separate condition rather than true if it is not an infinite loop. So this is bad code, but at the very least we can see we can still cancel it. So that is how we cancel a thread. And last but not least is the one we've already been using, which is task.wait. Task.wait is just gonna yield the current thread for some number of seconds. So in this case, we say start and we yield our current thread for one second and then we see end. 
So that one is pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to understand. This, it won't return a thread, but it will return the amount of time that it yielded. So we can see in this case, it waited for 1.01 seconds. So we can see that these yields and stuff are not necessarily perfect in terms of their timestamps. And that's because they're being checked every frame. And that covers the task library. Again, we're not covering the task desync or sync functions, but we hit on wait, delay, cancel, defer, and spawn. So spawn ran the function right away in its own thread. Defer did the same thing, but at the end of the frame, or rather the end of the invocation cycle, a delay ran the function in a new thread after some period of time. If we put a zero there, it would be the next frame. Wait will yield the current thread for the number of seconds you give it. If it's zero, then it'll wait for one frame. And cancel will cancel any thread that you give it if it can.